Sigma Theta Alpha. Um, this is Rush 20. So Joe and I are just gonna go over some basic rush information. And in the end, you guys can ask questions and either exec or the members can answer the questions for you. Um, so let's get started. Before anything happens, just like scan this QR code and just sign in if you're a rushy. It should work. Uh, do I have to do it or no? You're not a rushy. No. <laughs> everyone like a minute to do that is it working i just tried it out before and it was working okay perfect yeah it works all right is everyone done or got the code at least okay take it away joe Alrighty. So the first thing is our mission. Um, we're trying to create an environment that supports the development of competent and self-reliant leaders in the health professions through service-based learning and leadership-oriented activities. So we have a number of events and um, seminars and um, services that we do throughout the year um, that'll help like build your credentials and make you more well-rounded. Um, healthcare leader and healthcare professional. So um, also we're gonna be doing the development of competent and self-reliant leaders in the health. So teamwork, uh, okay, so the third thing is like teamwork between students um, from diverse healthcare backgrounds and career tracks. So our four core values are teamwork and brotherhood, ethical leadership, commitment to service, knowledge and learning, and our five main councils are community education, career development, community service, philanthropy, and culture and recruitment. And you'll hear from all the five councils. Um, if you're rushing, these are definitely things you should know, um, especially when interviews come. So, you know, heads up. So the next thing is our goals. Um, we want to support our brothers and sisters through the rigorous courses required of future healthcare professionals. Basically, any classes, stuff like that that you need help with, we got you, we got your back. We got you got ours it's like a family here so and then building and reinforcing strong ethical values and character characteristics of compassionate and moral leaders um we also want to develop understanding respect and collaboration between all members of the healthcare system and then the last thing is sharing our passion for health and medicine by promoting health education supporting causes that align with our mission and values so we're gonna talk about the e-board um, every member is just going to go and say their like grade, their major, uh, what track they're in, and uh, the year. So Carly, you can go. Yeah, and if anyone's not here, we can just skip them. A few people contacted me and so they couldn't make it. But um, hi, everyone, if I didn't get the chance to meet you. Um, my name is Carly. And I'm, I'm the president of the frat. Um, I'm a senior. I'm double majoring in PMB and psychology, and I'm on a pre-med track. Carly is also going to UConn Med. Just throwing that out there. It's pretty awesome. Anyways, okay. My name is Jackie. I am a biology and Spanish double major. Um, I'm a junior and I was on the pre-med track, but I am now going to be doing an accelerated nursing program after my undergrad. Hi, my name is John. I'm a junior double major in PMB in Spanish and I am on the pre-med track. Shit. Okay. Um, um, hi, I'm Jason. I'm the treasurer. Um, yo, I had to pull up Cheryl's text that she sent me because I didn't know what we were saying. But, all right, all right. my name's Jason. Um, okay, I'm a junior. My major is nursing, and I'm an, like a nursing. My track's nursing, so yeah. Um, Bridget, Bridget is still working. Um, I believe she's a junior, <laughs> pre-med, um, PMB major. Hi, I'm Sajal. I am an allied health sciences major, healthcare management and insurance studies minor. I'm a senior and I'm also looking to do an accelerated nursing program. Kristen, you're up. Yeah, I don't think she's here. 
Okay. Um, well, Kristen, she's a senior. She's an allied health science major. Um, and I think she's on a pre-PA track. All right, Pooja. Hi, I'm Pooja. I'm a junior allied health sciences major and I'm pre-PA and I'm community service chair. Hi, I'm Cheryl. I'm a PNB and it's like double major with a neuroscience minor. Um, I'm on the pre-med track and my pronouns are she, her, and hers. Hi, I'm Joe. Um, I'm a political science and psychology double major and my track is healthcare administration. Um, I don't know if Sam's here, but Sam Gorky, she's our historian. Uh, she's a sophomore. Um, and she's in the pharmacy school of applying. Hi, I'm Dominica. I'm a junior and I'm a nursing major. Uh, I'm Tristan. I'm a senior, um, technically pre-med track, but I just, I've decided to do just like a regular PhD. Um, yeah. Okay. So now the counselors are going to talk about what they do. Is that Kristen? Yeah, she's restarting her computer so we can okay. go back to Kristen. All right, let's do this. Sorry, I could not unmute. <laughs> I am the career development chair. Um, so as you can see on the slides, I provide resources and experiences that you need to become educated on your career choices. So with that, um, I kind of, especially for like freshmen and stuff, it can get quite confusing of like prereqs that you might need, um, experiences that you need for certain schools, such as PAs, like you need a lot of hours and that's something that could be beneficial to know like freshman year so you can get started. Um, so just some tips and tricks for you to go into the career that you're looking forward to. Uh, make you a stronger candidate when applying to graduate schools and careers. I, if you were stopped by during the um, involvement fair, we briefly discussed how it's a very big network with how uh, resources and opportunities are passed down to one another. Um, so like some people I know worked at kind of get children's with like a fellowship and recommended other people to join it. And you just hear a lot about a lot of opportunities out there in the healthcare field that are otherwise honestly pretty hard to come by. Um, and I hold events where members can meet with professors, advisors, and people who work in a health setting to help with their future. Um, so with that, I'm trying to do a panel essentially in the future to bring in health professionals or people um, maybe who are in the frat and past, who are in schools now, uh, how they got in, what the application process looked like, what they do during their job or grad school or whatever it may be. Um, and especially with, again, freshmen, sophomores, and juniors and seniors, uh, it's sometimes hard to distinguish the paths within the healthcare field. So this is a really good chance to hear about them all in one place um, and ask questions. I know personally, I came in as a pre-PA um, with the pre-PA intent and like sessions and Things like this helped me decipher them all and choose that I actually wanted to do nursing. So yeah, that's essentially what I do as the career development chair. Oh my God, sorry, my computer was broken for a second. Um, is Kristen here? Cause she says she's back, but I don't see her and I can't see everyone. Else. Yes. I am back. Okay, well, we'll go back to Kristen's chair. Hi, everyone. My name is Kristen. For those of you who might have joined us for the, like, the, um, the fair, the activity fair, my, I have gotten a new computer. My microphone now works. We came in earlier and my camera wasn't working, but we got it now. That's why I had to leave and come back. 
but I am the community education chair. I am a senior. I use she, her, hers pronouns. I'm an allied health science major, but I'm minoring in uh, molecular and cell biology and communication. And I'm on the pre-PA track. And I've been the community education chair for two years. Um, so basically communicate Community education is more general um, education. We do a lot of work with topics uh, like we try to do um, mental health first aid every semester. We've done a couple sessions with medical ALS and medical Spanish. Um, we tried to get a Stop the Bleed course last April and we had it set up and then of course we could not do it unfortunately because of covid but that's something that i'm working on for we'll see how the end of of this spring goes if things get any better um vitals night is an, um, another thing that we like to do we've done suture clinics and um the difference between um sagel and i's position with the community education versus career development um, career development is more geared towards more of like the professional things, whereas community education, as you can see with some of the examples here, are more general things that would be great to know in any healthcare profession, even if you're not in healthcare, medical ALS or um, medical Spanish or stop the bleed courses are always good to have. And that's what I tend to focus on in my chair in my events. Hi guys, so for community service, um, like the slide says, we try our best to give back to the community that gives so much to us here at UConn and around UConn. Um, so to do this, we raise money, um, pass pamphlets to the community about health, and we also participate in Huskython, which if you don't know, it's an 18 hour dance marathon. Um, so we'll be participating in that this year. That's something we do every year and that's uh, my job to coordinate. We also uh, did a couple events last semester, as I mentioned in the involvement fair, if you were there. Um, even though like COVID was a little difficult, um, we had a mask making event where we got together and made some masks. And then we uh, just recently dropped those off at uh, St. Francis in Hartford. Um, and then we also did a Cards for Kids uh, event where everybody just made the cards on their own and we collected them and we are going to send those out uh, to kids in hospitals who are just who could use some positivity. So we're doing our best to um, adapt to the whole situation right now. Um, but yeah, so we have some more stuff coming up this semester. So look forward to that. Um, I'll speak on behalf of Bridget, but um, the difference kind of between philanthropy and community service chair is that philanthropy is more directed um, to specific people and organization that we personally believe in that support our stance on healthcare um, and something that really aligns with our values. And this is a more unique opportunity compared to like more com um, community service opportunities because um, the whole fraternity votes on them. So like this year, um, it's more directed to things that are occurring now in public health and um, the Black Lives Matter movement in the past who directed to a specific individual who needed it for cancer treatments. It's really um, what arises as a result of what our members think is important in the, in the community. Um, so it's really nice to have a say in that. Okay, so I can talk about culture and recruitment. So Joe and I are our co-chairs. So basically we try to build and maintain brotherhood and we try to have different events throughout the semester. Um, well, before COVID we used to have a nice formal and some semis in between. And we also conduct the rush processes for brand new members. And basically this year there could or could not be a formal depending on how COVID goes, but um, that's definitely something we're trying to look for. All right, so the rush process, um, try to attend three events. Um, if you can't make it to an event, uh, please shoot an email to any one of the council members or like I'll even accept like a DM in my Instagram. Um, just let us know that you're not going to make it and you'll be fine. Um, then if you make it to the three events, you'll be automatically invited to the invite only events. Um, and then after that is interviews. So really try to get to know people between now and interviews and interviews will start um, the last week after the rush event. 
and signups will be sent out the week before. So the links will be posted on the website. Um, if we could just skip forward to the schedule just so I could show what it looks like. Yeah. So um, here are just like some of the events. Obviously, this is tonight's the info session, but next, starting next week, we're going to have mocktails and networking and trivia night. Both start at 7 p.m. Um, mocktails and networking, where it's going to be like a Zoom event. Um, and then we get into breakout rooms and you'll be talking to other people. Um, trivia night is strictly about um, student data alpha. Um, and so study, I'm not saying study too hard, but definitely study up on your information about Sigma Theta Alpha, and you'll be fine there. Um, and then the week after, so the second week of February, it's just a bunch of game nights. Um, I don't know if anybody has played Scrib.io or code names, but those are some fun things. Um, then we're going to have uh, kind of more of like those hand games, so never have I ever, would you rather, stuff like that just so we can really get to know you. And then Family Feud will end that up. And then that Friday, you will have um, interview sign up deadline. So all of those start at 7 p.m. So it's pretty consistent. Um, if you can't make any of them, not too big of a deal. Um, and then interviews that next, that following third week of February. And that's it, yeah. Any questions? Uh, I just wanted to comment a little bit more on the schedule. Um, so in terms of interviews, we'll give you more instructions on what they're formatted like, but just kind of a general thing. Um, again, it's just to see if you align with our mission. It's not a materialistic thing. I use the example, if we don't like your hair, we're not going to let you in. It's nothing like that at all. A lot of it is based on if we see you at events and know that you're trying to get to know us um, and making effort for us to get to know you. It makes it easier if we can see your face or at least see your name um, and know that you're familiar to us. So um, that's really important to us in that, um, yeah, I guess, does anyone else have anything to con comment about um, the rush process? I know um, some people get a little confused on the difference between rush and pledge. So like after the whole rush process and if we accept you in interviews, then you move on to pledge and that's a whole sequence of getting to know each of the chairs more. And that'll be more of a directed um, activity such as maybe mental health first aid or a panel with um, various healthcare professionals just to get like a little taste of what our fraternity is like. And that's the more intensive um, part of Rush and those events are more mandatory. This part's more um, try to come to everyone, but um, if you don't, it's not the end of the world. And again, please email us if you can. Just kind of going off of that, this whole Rush process, the purpose of it is for us to get to know you guys. It like, it really is gonna be what you make out of it. Um, we really wanna make connections but again, if we don't really see you or if you don't talk, it's it's going to be very difficult, especially because we don't have that like in-person contact. It's going to be difficult to specifically recognize a person. So we just just definitely make sure that you guys are getting what you can out of it so that we could get to know you and like actually know who you are. That's the whole point of this. Yeah. And if you feel uncomfortable um, speaking out in front of a group, always you can chat us uh, specifically um, to everyone if possible. I am currently recording the session for people that can't make it. If this is um, uncomfortable for you, please message me, message someone in the fraternity so we can make sure we don't post it without your permission. Um, but if not, we're going to post it on the website. So if you could let us know by tonight, that'd be awesome. Okay, so now um, do any of the rushes have any questions because there are some members in here and we are more than happy to answer any questions that you might have. Don't be shy. <laughs> yeah, you guys can ask us anything. Yeah, and if you're uncomfortable speaking, feel free to put it in the chat. Um, I just have like a question for all the members now. Like, can you guys go through like your rush process and how you felt and like stuff like that? Um, I could speak on that. So I rushed last year. I'm a junior, but I rushed as a sophomore um, my first semester at UConn actually because I transferred to UConn. And um, I just showed up to the info session not really knowing what I was going to get out of it. Um, I was just like, hey, I'm in the area, like might as well go. Um, and going to the info session, I like realized that there's such a big community in like students in healthcare. And I really didn't know that there was something like this. 
so that kind of uh, piqued my interest. And then um, with the events, I kind of was like scared to go to my first one, wasn't sure how it was going to go. Um, I really like was about to not show up to my first one, actually. And then I talked to my sister and she was like, no, just give it a chance. And I'm so, so glad I did. Um, if I hadn't, I wouldn't have uh, qualified for an interview. I wouldn't have been here today. So I'm really, really glad that I did. I really suggest that if you guys are even remotely interested, at least try showing up to an event, see what we're about. Obviously, this is a little bit different than how it was for me, but I really feel like you will see what you're going to get out of it like right off the bat. So I really encourage you to just give it a try. This is a question just for like any member. I'm curious what's the best thing or the most important thing to specifically you to come out of the frat? I actually have a good answer for this. I, um, Heather, one of our members from a few years ago, she um, taught medical ASL and she was really passionate about it because her mother was deaf. And um, seeing her passion, just gain the opportunity to make little, um, see little gestures or something. I think that's really good for promoting inclusivity in the healthcare um, profession. And now I'm taking ASL 1 and 2. And I'm actually interested in becoming an ENT, specializing in the ear, because I see um, how cool a cochlear implant surgery could be to restore hearing, but also having that perspective of working with someone and um, talking to them about their options if they do choose to um, restore their hearing or um, immerse themselves in the deaf community, which is so strong and such a great culture. So um, that's one event that I really loved. And it's not something that was broadcasted right away. You don't, I mean, we did list it on the list, but that's not something that you initially expect to see in this. I would have to say for me, it's the people I met. Um, we're a great group of people. I'm not going to lie. We're amazing. Um, and the friendship that you make are like really like amazing. Um, a bunch of us, like last year, we all went on a global brigade trip to Ghana and like we really got close there and like coming back and everything like this such a, like an opening and welcoming community like everyone our frat like no matter you know whatever race religion like anything like that we always accept you guys for who you are and like that's the most important thing from this fraternity. I think for me going off of what Cheryl said it would definitely be both the networking and the brotherhood because I think the two go hand in hand. Um, definitely I've met some of my best friends and I feel like there's a very strong sense of brotherhood and through that, I feel supported no matter what. Like, I think I mentioned at the last session on, I think it was Tuesday, that I switched from um, like a pre-med track to a pre-PA track. And that was scary. Like that was a big kind of life decision for me. But I felt so supported when I was talking to my peers and even alumni of the frat that have already graduated, uh, talking to them. And I felt so supported with that decision um, and just like so informed and like validated through that brotherhood network that we built. Hi, I'm Marissa. Um, I'm not one of the, the chairs, but just a regular member. But I think one of the best things that I got out of this frat was meeting new people that had like different ideas and different backgrounds than you. Because I'm, I'm a nursing major and I felt like everything was nursing, 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 really thrown in your face. And this was a great place to meet people with different ideas and different paths. And it really broadens your ideas. You know, when I first joined the frat, I really wasn't sure what I wanted to do with nursing. And now I'm kind of thinking, you know, I could go further. I could, I could be an APRN. I could do something else, you know, and it really broadens your ideas as to what you can do within your major and within your career. I would say with the whole people thing, um, especially currently, you will almost never have a class where you don't know someone in it. Um, especially like one of the Pratt brothers, which I find very, very helpful, uh, especially when distance learning, um, when you like can't really see people in person, you at least have someone to reach out to. And it's gotten to the point where I like coordinate my schedule with people here and I won't like never have a class with someone, which is super helpful in studying and everything. 
Yeah, I second that. I rushed my first semester freshman year and throughout my entire college experience, I have never had like a STEM class where somebody in the frat wasn't in it. And it's just like, it's easy. You just kind of shoot out a text to the group chat and you're like, hey guys, are you as stressed out as I am? Or like when everybody was on campus, you'd we would like send out texts like, hey, I'm at this place studying for this exam if anybody wants to join or does anybody need help with this problem? So it's like it, the networking is really cool because like Kristen and Cheryl were saying, we're very, very close knit and it's like, we're all friends. And when we're on campus, it makes it feel a lot smaller just because you see everybody everywhere, but definitely agreeing with Sajel that like you have like literal resources in the form of members for your classes. Does anyone else have any other questions they want to ask? Oh, by the way, we do have bigs and littles. Um, once you get through the rush process and you are like a pledge, um, we do have uh, bigs and littles. So if anyone was wondering about that. I have a question for um, anyone who wants to answer, but I was wondering like, what is the most memorable event for you that you've um, been to in your time in this fraternity? Husky Thon. Yeah, was cliche. Um, I, for me, like the Husky Dawn was the first event, like the first time I'm me doing it. So doing it with the frat was like really, really amazing experience. Um, and I don't know, it was like I think it was the highlight of 2020 to be honest. Like after that, it went downhill, but it was really fun. Um, my favorite event. Uh, for a few years running, I can't tell you guys about because it's kind of a tradition that we do every year. But um, it does involve a lot of bonding, a lot of exploring the campus, um, just learning about UConn, learning about everyone. And it's such a great way because you're thrown in random groups. Um, and I can't speak more because I'm going <laughs> to give away a whole plot of what's going to happen. But we probably won't be able to do it this year, maybe in the fall. Um, but it's just a great way to start off um, when you're initiated into pledge um, and just meeting everyone for the first time doing something that's not um, not expected. I have to say kind of going off of what Carly was saying before um, my favorite event was definitely um, medical sign language. The person who hosted it had graduated, but we had discussed um, reaching out to her and we could always do something virtually too. But it was just it was just really cool. And it was something that I never really put into perspective, you know, like you working in healthcare, you have to be ready and inclusive for anybody that's going to come your way, you know, and it's like, if there's a language barrier, it's obviously going to be really, really difficult to give them like the best treatment that you can. So just having that medical sign language um, event was really cool and really eye opening for me. Uh, I have a question. So um, besides like Huskython, are there any like campus-wide events that you guys have participated in like through this frat? Um, I don't know if this counts, but does the suture clinic, anybody can go to that, right? I'd say, yeah, that's a pretty uh, big event. Yeah. So you just kind of go and you learn how to like um, stitch people up and some other things that I don't remember. Um, but yeah, it's a lot of fun to, you know, practice your stitching and see who's bad at it and who's good at it and whatnot. We've also, um, obviously not last fall, but we have participated in the homecoming parade. And going off of what Tristan said, uh, mental health first aid certification is a campus wide event and it actually uh, the woman who hosts it does it like two or three or four times a semester. So um, we try to get our members in like a couple members in each session at a time so that we don't completely dominate the session because it is a campus wide event. Um, I don't know 
if we would count this either, but a lot of times we do fundraising, like a grilled cheese night where we deliver all over campus and even off campus. We advertise to anyone on campus and those funds again go to, to philanthropy. Um, I think also just like miscellaneous things, not generally campus wide, but getting other people involved in other organizations, because I'm involved in like community outreach and volunteering programs. And I've had members join my um, club or my organization, I've joined other people. So that's also really eye opening, um, even if it's not entirely campus wide, but it's offered to everyone. This is just a general question, but how would you describe the community? I mean, I'm biased, but I, I think the community is very welcoming. Um, kind of what Kristen was saying before, she was um, switching her track and everybody is obviously gonna be very supportive of you. Or I feel like even if you like, do poorly on an exam, you know, you're going to have the people in your frat to fall back on and support you regardless. Um, the feel that I get with the events that I go to and at least with like the group chat now or with Zoom calls now is like everybody's super supportive of each other, regardless of what you're doing. Um, there's really no judgment just because we're all a lot of like minded in individuals um, with the same goals, you know, and that's really just to treat people as best as you can. Um, so I think, I, I just think the idea that we are all so like-minded and have similar goals is what makes it super welcoming and non-judgmental. Um, also adding on to that, like there's like we're just we're more than like a fraternity, like we're actually like friends outside of it. Um, if you didn't get that yet, like on the weekends, we'll all hang out together. We'll all go do something um, before, you know, COVID was a thing. But like we still like get whoever's on campus, like we still get together, like we'll talk to each other, um, especially if we're like stressing out about something like there's always someone who can always help you with something. And I think that's like the best part of this community because there's always someone for you. Anyone else have any questions? What are some of the healthcare careers that you guys are interested in? Type it in the chat if you don't feel comfortable opening. Sorry, I didn't mean to put people on the spot. Um, so personally, I've been like a camp counselor and like throughout the year, like academic year, I work with kids too. So I'm leaning towards child psychiatry, but I'm waiting to like, I get older to actually make a decision. Nice. Um, I'm on, I'm an MCD major and I'm on the med track, but um, like previously I've done like a lot of um, internships with like childcare. So that's definitely like uh, a direction that I want to go with going forward, but I don't know yet. <laughs> Yashika, I wanted to tell you, I have the same tapestry as you, the wave, except for it has pugs on it. Like the wave is made of no pugs. No way. That yeah. sounds awesome. I should have gotten that one. 
I'm like, who made that? <laughs> Red bubble. It's a good one. Do we have any dentists, like pre dent? Yeah, I'm pre dental. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, we definitely have a lot of dental people. I just didn't want to, like, I wanted to advertise that because, like, we include dental too, and pharmacy and all other stuff too. And sometimes the occasional business major. Or the poli sci major. I think one of our former members was like, he wanted to work for OSHA. So he was technically environmental science, but it was like, like human safety kind of goals. Does anyone have questions about like rush or like the process? Um, I feel like a lot of people have asked me in the past, like how do you do like rush and pledge with like a full um, course load? And honestly, it's not that bad. Like it seems like a lot in that moment, but like if you manage your time well, like you can do it and you will be fine. And like, it's, it's nice. Cause like when I was rushing, I was, a, I rushed as a sophomore. So I was in Pooja's class. Um, I was stressed out cause I was taking orgo and anatomy and physiology. And I was just like, I can't do this. Um, but it was so nice to like take a break and go to like rush events and pledge events and talk to other people. And then we can all complain together um, over orgo and anatomy and everything. So it was just definitely a fun time. And it's definitely doable. So like, you got this. This might sound crazy, but honestly, when I rushed freshman year, I think rushing helped me organize my time better. Like it, we had rush events, I generally around like 7 p.m. every time we had one. So it kind of made me study early and like get more sleep. And like, I just felt like it helped me organize my life a little bit. Might be a little out there, but <laughs> it felt like it did. Well, I think one thing with Pledge specifically is that we, used to, I'm not sure how it's going to look this semester and we'll get back to people obviously with that information, is the mandated study hours and that also like helps promote um, with other brothers and pledges and a lot of people are in the same classes again. So you will be studying Orgo um, and one way I learn best is through either like teaching someone or someone teaching me and going back and forth with that method. So that works really well. Obviously, if you like studying alone, you can do that as well. Um, I've seen people like, especially with Zoom, just kind of have like an accountability buddy, make sure you're actually studying like not on your phone. So that's a good way that we can do that now at least, but yeah. Whoever has Tran, good luck. <laughs> Um, he's not that, that bad. He's just very like sad. I don't know how to describe. He's very flamboyant. He's very like like you should know the basics. Like don't ask him like a basic question. Um, because he's very like he'll call you out in class, but like ask questions. But just a reminder. Did anyone have Gael Ung or Amy Howell? Those were my two favorites. They were both angels for Orgo. Um, I was going to take Amy Howell, but um, I had another class at the time, so I couldn't really fit it in my schedule. Yeah, I've heard that she's really good, so I was going to take her. And the other teacher is new, so I didn't really want to go with the new teacher. Yeah. But yeah, I was just about to take her. <laughs> she was so nice. She, when you, What she does is like she'll drop your lowest exam grade and replace it with your second lowest exam grade. So like the semester I took her, I, there were four exams and I got 90s on three of them. And then one, I got a 60, but the lowest one gets dropped and replaced. So I actually got four 90s. Thank you, John. Thanks for that okay. for it. Um, does anyone have any more questions relevant to the Pratt? Um, not just classes at the moment that we can answer. I don't want to post this to the website and have it just be a lecture about Orgo. <laughs> I actually do have a question. How do you guys feel about um, members who are like part of other organizations or maybe other frats or sororities? 
so um, you can also rush like a social act or social um, fraternity or sorority in conjunction with our fraternity. I think the one thing that that would um, cause conflict is, with is like the pledge process um, because a lot of our events are mandated and the only excuses really are um, if you have class or another personal issue. I think there's ways we can work around it. And also if you're younger, um, like our freshman or sophomore, we'd love to have you rush again. Um, when, if say you rush a social now and then rush us in a year or do the opposite or something like that, we're really flexible. Um, again, as long as your values align with us. And it, like um, a lot of PAs or like I'm pre-med, so I'll be in the pre-med club and also in Sigma Theta Alpha and I still get to see the same opportunities. And like Carrie is really, one of our members is very involved in the pre-med society and she has brought some of those ideas to us. We shared ideas with them. So it's really a collaborative effort because we, yeah, we do share those values. So we would love to share with other people. How many members do you guys currently have? Yeah, I'd say around 50. Um, it's uh, toggling back and forth depending on, you know, um, this semester or this previous semester because of COVID, it's been a little bit tougher to get people. And we've had people reach out to us um, specifically stating why they couldn't attend events because of um, whatever conflict they did have stated. It's not just they're not interested in this semester. We did have engaging events about um, vaccine development or healthcare disparities that I personally enjoyed and people that could make it enjoyed. So we're looking out to even like sending that so um, other members can watch it asynchronously if they don't, you know, if their um, times don't work well for them. So um, we're looking at expanding again as, as um, we always are growing in the healthcare fields. Um, we do take about like 30 individuals max for each rush, rush season, um, but it's all depending on who we see um, and how well you guys get to know us. I was curious on the time commitment and I'm wondering if anyone here is both an ac in an academic frat and a social frat and like how you balance it out. I don't think anyone here is right I am actually. Just kidding. <laughs> Hi. So I rushed both the same semester my freshman year and they were like kind of different times but it wasn't like that bad honestly and I'm like still taking like obviously I'm like pre dense so I'm still taking like all those classes that I need to do too so I think I like I balanced it. it was definitely kind of hard like rushing and taking like two rushing two um fraternities and sororities but it's definitely manageable like you can do it if you want to Hi, Candy. Hi, John. How many hours a week would you spend, um, like, in meetings and stuff? Um, I think the schedule is kind of weird to kind of predict, especially with because of the different stages of when you're rushing and stuff. So like rush, you can see the schedule kind of laid out pretty easily. There's no like chapter or extra meetings during that, even for normal members, just because we're focusing on recruitment. And that's our main focus right now. Um, with pledge, we'll probably have additional chapters that we can add on. But um, pledge events are probably um, two a week, if that depending on how well we space out, depending this semester is looking wonky as usual, because um, we're trying to fit it all in with um, the two weeks, you know, at the end of the semester in the beginning that are all virtual. So we have to take account for that. But during a normal semester in the fall, again, it's usually one or two um, activities a week. And then we also have chapter by weekly. It usually is, it could be more or less depending on what we're doing. If we're Huskython, usually you have to make like a banner for your kid. Um, create like a basket and it's more um, more time consuming. So we'd have more meetings for that. But again, at that point, it's what you put into it. You're not required to come to that. Um, but if you want to be engaged and interact in these, I like suggest being as involved as you can.
Anyone else? <laughs> you can always um, email us later, like on our website, contact us that way if you have more questions or think of something later that you don't have like a burning question right now. Okay, I think that is all everyone has for questions tonight um, or information that we want to share. If anyone has any last minute words of wisdom, any members, um, but if not, speak your peace or hold your peace. Did everyone like do attendance? Like all the rest? Yeah, did everyone get the chance to take attendance? We can send the, the um, link again or show the QR code. Yeah, if you didn't, don't worry about it. We can do it again. I have advice. Okay. When in doubt, coffee. That's all. Okay. Coffee. And worst case scenario, Monster or Red Bull. I'm being so serious. I pull all nighters like three times and it's even. Do not take that advice. <laughs> Caffeine is a drug, friends. Remember that. Iced or hot. John, I think someone asked ice or hot. Oh, sorry. But ice or, oh, wait, ice coffee? No, ice coffee always. If you get a hot coffee, I'm so sorry. I, I would put, I would get ice cubes and like put that there. I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm a bit of a hot cocoa fan myself. Just saying, I got a mug right here. 